Hey friends, it's Holly from Shake Antique and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a jewelry box makeover. This one is super satisfying and a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, I don't really want to spoil it for you, but we are doing a textured look on this jewelry box. So if that's your style and you're excited for this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. All right, friends, here's the piece we're going to be working on today. It is a vintage jewelry box. I found this on Facebook Marketplace, and you can see the outside is in really good condition. It still has that shine to it, and there's not any dents or cracks, which is good. But when I inspected it further, when I got home, I noticed the interior felt lining actually had mold in it. You can see in the ring holders here. So we're going to have to gut the interior of this jewelry box. So first we're going to start by disassembling everything. I'm going to start by putting the jewelry box on its back so that I can open the doors and remove them. And since these screws are very, very small, I'm using a small container to make sure I don't lose any in the process. Now that we've got those doors off, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hinges completely. Next, I'm going to remove the glass from the doors, so I'm going to remove these metal plates that are holding the glass in place, and then I'm going to carefully remove the glass. And again, keeping all my pieces in a small container so that I don't lose any. And I'm labeling each piece of glass so that when I reassemble this at the end, I put the glass in the correct door. And then just repeating that process on the other door as well. Now I'm just removing the magnet that holds the doors closed. Now for the satisfying part, I'm going to be removing that felt lining. So go ahead and enjoy.
All right, now here is where the problem started. I was thinking the glue would be super dried up and it would be easy to remove this, but I quickly learned that this felt is actually attached to cardboard and then glued onto the wood interior. So that is what is remaining when I pull off the felt, which was super annoying. So when I ripped up the felt, the cardboard stuck. So I started by first using my metal putty knife to see if I could just remove it that way, but that didn't really work so well. As you can see, the cardboard just did not want to come up. It was super annoying. So I decided to use some lemon essential oil. Essentially, it does the same thing as Goo Gone, but without the chemicals. But as you can see, that didn't really do much. So then I moved on to my hair dryer, and that worked okay. But you can see in this clip here, it's coming up like a quarter inch at a time. So I did get this whole bottom removed with my hair dryer, but just this small section took like two hours to remove, which was super frustrating. After I removed this bottom piece, I was feeling really frustrated and annoyed. So I actually had to take a break from this piece um, and then when I did come back to it a few days later, I had the brilliant idea of using a heat gun to remove it. And that was actually a lot easier than using my hairdryer. So I used a heat gun on the left and right side, and that made it a lot easier to remove. I didn't film that portion because I just wanted to get it done. And here is all that lining that came out. You can see how small some of those pieces were. That's why it took me so long. Now we're going to move on to cleaning the piece. I'm just showing you here what it looked like on the sides. After using the heat gun, it was a lot cleaner than using my hair dryer. Now onto cleaning, I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner mixed with some warm water. And I'm using an old toothbrush just to get in any of those areas that I can't reach with a rag. And I'm just rinsing off that cleaner with some clean, clear water. After letting everything dry, I'm going to be priming this piece using Dixie Belle's Slick Stick. This is going to allow the paint to adhere properly to that shiny surface. And since you can't rinse this in your drains, since it will clog them, I'm using a chip brush to apply it.
We are going to be going for something a little bit different than I normally do. I'm going to be doing a textured look on this piece today, so I'm not worried about brush strokes or extra texture, so I'm just applying this primer in all directions, not worrying about brush strokes or that texture. And if you haven't used painter's pyramids like these, I would definitely recommend picking some up. It makes it a lot easier to paint edges and corners without getting paint on your hands or whatever surface you're working on. You can see here how shiny the surface is. I could have scuff sanded, but sometimes I just prefer priming or over, over scuff sanding. So I'm just going to continue that priming process on the side, just showing you what that looks like. Especially for a smaller piece like this, it's a lot easier to just go in with a primer than to have to sand all these little details and corners. Make sure you do let this primer dry overnight before coming back and painting. Now I'm going to be starting with Dixie Belle's cotton, also using a chip brush for this. Again, I'm going for that textured look. So I'm going to be applying this using stippling tapping motions. This is going to give me a lot more texture than if I were to brush it on in straight lines. And here's what that texture looks like. Now I'm just going to show you that same process on the side of the jewelry box itself. Just continuing brushing it on to make it a little bit easier and then tapping on top of that. I am going for a layered look, so after I use white, I'm actually going to use a second color. When I first picked up this jewelry box, I was actually planning on just doing white alone, but I'm really glad that I chose to use a color because I think it's more interesting and adds more depth that way. I know a lot of people like white, but it's not my favorite. I think a lot of people like neutrals and they can be really pretty, but I do like using color whenever I can and making pieces look unique. Not only is color my style preference, but it's also a lot easier when you're painting because white has a lot less obviously has a lot less pigment to it so you need a lot more coats in order to get full coverage for example 
if you are doing a solid white piece, it can take anywhere from three to five coats to get full coverage. And with a color, it's usually more common to only need two coats. Now, after that first coat is dry, I'm coming back with my second color, Dixie Belle Sea Glass. Again, I'll be using that same chip brush to apply it with that stippling tapping motion. I just love this color, don't you? I think it works perfectly with the seashell detailing here. The cool thing about doing texture like this is it's very customizable. If you want minimal texture, use a thinner amount of paint. If you want more texture, really glob that paint on there. It's gonna take longer to dry, but that's gonna add more texture if you're doing thicker layers. Or you can even use Dixie Belle's add-in um, sea spray, I believe it's called, and that thickens up your paint. You mix that with your paint and it adds a ton more texture and depth. Now just repeating that process on the jewelry box, I'm adding just a little bit more paint because I want more texture on the sides here. I know this look isn't for everyone. Some people don't like texture, they like a modern look. But I think it's really pretty and I also think it's important sometimes to try something new and try something out your comfort zone so you are able to add more skills to your tool belt. Again, I'm just repeating that process on the top. Sometimes these chip brushes can shed their bristles so if that happens just go ahead and remove it with your finger like I did and then go over the area again. After letting that first coat dry, I'm just coming back for my second coat. Just repeating that same process that we did with cotton as well as the first coat of sea glass. I love the sound of this paintbrush and the tapping sound. So I left the audio in in case you enjoy it as well. After letting the paint dry overnight, I am coming back with a 120 grit sandpaper and I am distressing the edges and corners in order to reveal that white paint beneath. This kind of adds to that beachy chic look and it adds more depth and variety to the texture in the paint. These are the little details in my opinion that really makes a piece special and unique. I did sand a little bit too far in some areas, so I'm just coming back with a detail brush and adding that white paint in those areas.
I love how the white looks in these distressed areas. I think it adds something special. I think it really makes those details stand out and really adds to that beachy effect. Here is a close-up of that door. I think it looks really pretty. Now to seal the piece, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Spray Wax and a lamp-free shop towel. You want to spray this on generously and then let it sit for 15 seconds and then go ahead and wipe back the excess after that 15 seconds has passed. This wax is very well named. It is very easy to use, especially for small pieces like this and it cures in six hours, which I'm obsessed with. Next, I'm going to be dealing with the inside of the piece. I'm going to be lining it using this paper I found at Hobby Lobby. I cut out a piece to fit. I'm just checking to see if it fits correctly, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it with this spray adhesive I also got at Hobby Lobby, and then I'm going to place it inside and press it down so it's smooth and flat. Now that it's all complete, I just want to remind you what we started with. And here's how it looks now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved being able to do something a little bit different, a little bit outside my comfort zone, and I'm really happy with the result. So if you enjoy this style of video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos before you leave. I would love to have you. And I thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I don't really think this through. <laughs> uh.
my gosh. Okay. Does it sting me? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. How am I supposed to record now? <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. <laughs> no, get away. <laughs> okay. Okay, serious. Don't come near me. Am I even still recording? Okay.